Okay. All right, thanks for coming back. I hope you all had a good break. Um, It, uh, those online, can you all hear these uh, aeroplane noise sound? Because there's this uh, air show happening in Bangalore. And uh, is it disturbing you all? Or are you all able to hear? Because it's very disturbing here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, glad, glad. All right. Uh, let's just uh, let's continue from where we left off. Um, in page seventy-two in your notes. Uh, we, I mean, so far we are. This chapter is all about talking, uh, talking about you know how Jesus pointed to uh, the works that he did, and then he kept emphasizing that uh, the works that he is doing uh, are the works of the Father and what the Father tells him to do. Right. Um, let's just continue with uh, with where we left off. Page seventy-two in your PDFs. Um, it talks about. Seeing the works leaves us with no other option. So what does that mean? Uh, if you let's look at John chapter 15, verse 24. John chapter 15, verse 24, it says, If I had not done, you might have to underline that, okay? Talks about if I had not done among them the works which no one else did they would have no sin. Okay, look at that line. If I had not done anything which no one else has done, uh, that then they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. So what he's saying is, the works that I've done is that's the final proof that you need to believe in me that I am the Son of God and that, that there is a God. Are you with me? Right? And to those he's saying, okay, to those who've seen the works that I've done, they still don't uh, they still don't believe me and they hate me and my father. See the connection there, him and his father. Guys, in my opinion, I think the gospel of John, I mean the whole Bible is uh, is the most beautiful love letter. Uh, of God, but then Gospel of John is some is such a beautiful uh, love letter between a father and a son, and in that there is the gospel uh, message uh, for us, uh, and just and because that leads us to the next point where Jesus talks about how his relationship and how his walk with the Father was, right? Um, how Jesus walked with the Father, um, just to uh, understand a little bit. In John chapter one verse eighteen, it says, "No one has seen God at any time." The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Now, again, I would encourage you, uh, if if you have a computer or whatnot, install this software called eSword. Uh, have you heard of it? E slash Sword. Okay, it's a wonderful, wonderful tool to study the Bible, to read the Bible, to do your own research and whatnot. Because you have, and if you have a Windows laptop, then it's even better. It's free. If you have a Mac, uh, then you have to pay for it. Uh, okay, but it's a wonderful application for you to study, and because there you get all these different languages like the Greek and whatnot, right? Uh, that was a side note I wanted to say because it says here, the only begotten son who is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. When you do a word study on that word, declared, declared him, uh, it simply means he has revealed him. Right? And when you read in the book of Hebrews, I think Hebrews chapter 1, uh, Jesus says, uh, you know, I have declared the brethren. Okay, uh, it's again. This, there's an element of singing involved in it, and there's an element of revelation involved in it. So Jesus again is saying, the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. In other words, He has revealed Him to us. Okay, and also the word "in the bosom" it simply means in the intimate presence, very close to the Father. That's what simp uh, it simply means, right? Um, the Lord Jesus walked in the intimate presence of the Father. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. I want you to uh, 
I mean, if you can make a note of it and read along with me. First one is Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. Matthew 14, 23. Now we constantly talk about how uh, you know Jesus as the Son of God, like uh, you know, uh, the one person on earth who should not feel the need to pray would have been Jesus, right? But then look at uh, look at these scriptures, uh, Matthew fourteen twenty three. It says, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone that's matthew 14 23 mark chapter 1 verse 35 mark chapter 1 verse 35 it says okay, just hold on a minute it says now in the morning having risen a long while before daylight that means while it was still dark he Jesus went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Luke chapter 5, verse 16. Luke 5, verse 16 says, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. He himself often withdrew into the wilderness. And prayed. Um, okay, here's a, a thing that I would encourage you to do: do a word study on wilderness. Okay, do a word study on wilderness. Okay, that means I would like you to uh, the root meaning of the word wilderness, the Hebrew word. What are the different Hebrew words for the word wilderness? What does it mean? Uh, and and the significance of wilderness in the life of people of Israel, and then by again Jesus would go uh, into wilderness of all places, right? Um, but very briefly, uh, so what is your idea of wilderness when I when you hear this word? What comes to your mind? L little louder, please. Sorry. Dryness, desert. Okay. Yeah. Wilderness, a wild place, yeah. Wilderness comes from the word wild, it's wild. Yeah, Sean. Disconnected from the world, yes, secluded, Shiv Kumar says, yeah. Secluded, uh, completely disconnected, right? Uh, <clears throat> So that is the terrain. Again, I, I keep talking about it. Uh, forgive me for my redundancy. Uh, but that is the terrain of the land of Israel. Okay. Uh, when we read Psalm 23, we look at, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside still waters and, you know, by makes me lie on green pastures. When we read it, at least in my head, uh, when I was in school, I, there was this cartoon called Heidi. Have you seen Heidi? It was one of my favorite cartoons, dude. It was such a beautiful cartoon. Nowadays, all bogus uh, cartoon. <laughs> uh, but you know, it was like okay, a story of a little girl and all the sheep. They take up the mountains. It's all green and it's all beautiful, like Swiss Alps and whatnot. That's the imagery you have when you when you read the word. Okay, he makes me lie down in green pastures. We think okay, it's amazing. Uh, but Israel, the terrain is only green a little bit during the month of December, Jan, and maybe a little bit in Feb. But for the rest of the year, the rainfall is very less, and it's a very dry land. And it is into the wilderness where the shepherds would take their flock and go, like for the longest periods of time. Um, and wilderness is a place of uncertainty, like any wild animal can attack. Like there is, there is no shade, there is no much of a refuge, uh, and whatnot, right? And you see that in the life of Israel and even in David's life, for 13 or 14 years, he would roaming around in the wilderness, hiding in the caves and whatnot. And there's a reason why I want you to do the word study on wilderness. It is beautiful. Okay, but here, like, you know, secluded and what Sean says, disconnected from the world, you see that Jesus is making the choice to get disconnected from the world to be connected with the Father. Right? That's what 
play solitude uh, when mark chapter 1 is uh, 135 it says he went to a solitary place it was a sol place of solitude because he was alone he was disconnected with the world but only to be connected with the father right um, and just a word of encouragement for us is guys this we are living in a day and age where we are hyper connected we are extremely hyper connected that is an understatement right uh, i i you all know the examples that's been given before like okay we are so connected to the world instagram social media whatever it is right you start scrolling the reels the first thing in the morning as soon as you wake up <laughs> or before brushing or do whatever it is uh, you know we are so connected uh, and and all of these has a voice like instagram has a voice what do i mean by that okay you are seeing some ads you are seeing some person saying something else Facebook Reels or YouTube Shorts, whatever, all of these media or whatever has a voice that's constantly speaking into your lives. It's so loud. Like it's like these big billboards on a highway. You can't miss it, right? It's so loud, isn't it? It's in your face type. And that's what this, you know, it's uh, we are living in a day and age like that. And it's so important for us to disconnect from the world and to be connected with the Father. I mean, Jesus recognized that, guys. How much more should we, right? Um, so let's continue. Um, so he walked in an intimate relationship with the Father, as it says in John chapter 10, verse 15, and John chapter 10, verse 30. It says, As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. I and my Father are one. Okay, it's statements like this that made people want to kill Jesus <laughs> because nobody spoke like this in the Jewish uh, community. Uh, I and my Father are one. Okay, uh, can someone read uh, John chapter 8, verse 29 for me, please? John chapter 8, verse 29. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that that are pleasing to him. Thank you. Right. So it says, he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Okay, the first half of that verse is only talking about how beautifully Jesus hosted the presence of God, right? Saying, he who sent me is with me. Uh, the Father has not left me alone. Um, and there's something about the way Jesus hosted the presence of God, that Jesus hosted, you know, uh, when Jesus was baptized, it says uh, the heavens parted, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove, yeah, and it remained on him. Right, it's stayed on him. That's what it says. A different translations has its own thing. It says a you know, Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove, and it's stayed on him. Right now, in that verse in John chapter eight, verse twenty nine, it says, um, "You know, the Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please Him." Are you with me? Okay, so pay at very attention to the series of words. I always do the things that please Him. Okay, so that means there are things that you can do that will not please him. Are you with me? Right, now, let's just say that you and I have a dove on our shoulders. Right? You know what a dove is, right? <laughs> right? A bird, right? Now, any bird is a very scary being, right? They are very easily scared. You just do. <laughs> They'll fly away, isn't it? Uh, now we want this bird to be with us at all times. We don't want it to fly away because we like its presence. You know what I'm talking about, right? I'm trying to draw a parallel. Because Holy Spirit came down in the form of Tao and stayed and rested on Jesus is what it says. Now if I'm conscious of his presence, if I'm mindful of his presence, every move I make 
every step, right, or every word that I say would be in mind where I would not want this bird to go away. That's not to say that to live in fear like a like a police, like a house arrest kind of like oh, you know, God is watching, you know, he'll poke your eyes. <laughs> you know, uh, he's watching, he's like policing, you know, it's hosting his presence is not born out of fear. Like, okay, he's with me, so I have to do everything that is right, legally correct, morally correct. I will not say bad words, watch, you know, it's but when you realize that. When you look at the life of Jesus, everything he's saying is, I want to host him well because I love him. Right? I love his presence so much that every move I make, everything I want to say or say will be mindful of him. Are you with me? Right? It's so in time and time again, we see Jesus uh, just saying that, you know, how much I love the Father. And then, as if that was not enough, uh, other scripture says uh, in John chapter three verse thirty five it says how much the father loves the son, right? The father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. John chapter ten verse uh, seventeen uh, it says therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Uh, are you all with me? I'm I am in page seventy four. Right, John chapter 10, verse 17. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. 854. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. 1510, John chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. John 16, 32. Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered each to his own and will leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Right? And so we see that, I mean... It's, it has to be the greatest love letter between a father and a son, isn't it? The father saying how much I love my son and the son saying I love you too. Uh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? And in, in this context, you, we have to keep in mind that Jesus came to reveal the father's love, isn't it? He came to reveal the father's love to the world, to an orphan world that was dying, that thought, okay, there is no God or this God is so far away. He made it possible and he's saying, okay, just the way I love my father, I want you to love him as well because he is our father. Are you with me? Right? And he's saying that in doing so, just like the father loves me, he loves you, which is why I came. Because he loves you so much, I came to die for your sins. Are you guys with me, following me? Yes? Okay, so uh, this is just a beautiful encouragement for all of us to live and walk uh, in the presence of God. And just like uh, that's that one of the greatest adventures that you can make. Any adventurous person here who likes adventuring? Adventures, you know, all the hiking and falling off the cliff and stuff. Like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, right, one of the greatest adventures or a quest that you can go on is the quest for the presence of God. For the quest for his face, right? For encountering his face. Um, because, again, coming back to Psalm 23, it says, He prepares a table for me, right? When you look at it in the light of eternity, in eternity, I'm going to be in his house. Are you with me? For eternity, I'm going to be in his house. That means he is going to host me for eternity. So, for the, say, however long I have my time on earth, say 35, 40, 50 years, I only have that much of years of time where I can host him here. Are you with me? Because for the rest of eternity, he hosts us. And this opportunity that you and I have is once in a lifetime opportunity to host him, our father. 
Are you with me? Uh, to worship him in the pain, because Bible says in Revelations, right? Uh, you know, a day will come where in heaven that there's going to be no shame, no pain, no tears, no sorrow. But so you you can't worship him. Uh, you know, it's only here where I can give him something what that I cannot give him in heaven. It is your time here on earth. Your worship here on earth will be is very different from your worship in heaven. Uh, why is the woman with the alabaster jar or her pain, you know her her tears are recorded? Uh, is because she's giving something to him. She is worshiping him with her pain, with with everything, with her brokenness, uh, and that's why our worship is valued so much more than the worship of the angels. Get what I'm saying? So giving him something, hosting him well here, just like what Jesus did, uh, is one of the most life's beautiful things that you can ever do. OK, um, let's continue. Bottom of page 74, um, John chapter 4, verse 34, it says, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. John chapter 6, verse 57, it says, as the living father sent me, I live because of the Father. Okay, uh, John chapter 4, verse 34, right? The first verse, it says, My food is to do the will of who sent me. Uh, so look at that. What does food do? It gives us energy. It keeps us alive for another day kind of thing, isn't it? It gives us energy, sustenance, nourishment. It gives us strength um, to live for another day. But Jesus is saying here that my strength, my nourishment, uh, my sustenance, it comes from doing the will who sent me. Are you with me? OK, now look up. In John chapter 8, verse 29, it said, the Father never leaves me because I always do what he tells me to do. Yes or no? So in this verse here, it says, my food is to do the will of whom, uh, of him who sent me. Now, Jesus can do something only if he's heard or seen. Yes or no? Yeah, only if he's heard the Father say something, he will do. And now it suddenly takes me back to that passage where Jesus tells the devil, like a man shall not live by bread alone, but from the every word that comes from you get what I'm saying? So there are words that come from the Father. I hear it, and I do it. That is my food. That's what Jesus is saying. Are you guys with me? Right? Um, and so he's saying, doing the will of the Father is my strength. That's where my, uh, my, my strength uh, comes from. OK, uh, let's continue uh, to the next section. It says, uh, doing what I see the Father do. Doing what I see the Father do, uh, John chapter 5, verse 17. But Jesus answered them, My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. My Father has been working until now, and I have been working. Uh, just underlying the point there, saying he's been co laboring with the Father. Uh, the Father is working, and so are we. The only time we stop is when He stops, and as far as we know, that He has not stopped working. <laughs> okay, so the Father is working, and so we are called to work as well. Uh, the only time we stop is when we, when He stops, or when He says to stop. Um, okay. Let's go to uh, another section because uh, some of the points are, are reiterated. Let's go to page number 76 in your PDFs, right? Let's go to page number 76. Right. As my father taught me, I speak. John chapter 7, verse 14 and 16, it says, Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, how does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. 
okay guys in jewish community right it's like one of those uh, small towns or villages where everybody knows everybody right it's like everybody knows every, everybody like one aunt, one auntie will know the whole history of another house <laughs> you know what i'm talking about it's like oh that house you know what happened there this happened They're like that fellow didn't study only he didn't go to college <laughs> so look at that scripture what it says because uh, they all marveled thinking how does this man know so much he's never gone to college he didn't come to apc bible college no like like y'all you know y'all are all amazing like you that's how you'll know your doctrine uh, and jesus answered and said to them my doctrine is not my own but his who sent me uh, john chapter 8 26 28 and 38 it says i have many things to say and to judge concerning you but he who sent me is true and i speak to the world those things which i heard from him verse 28 then jesus said to them when you lift up the son of man then you will know that i am he and that i do nothing of myself but as my father taught me i speak these things i speak what i have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father john 12 49 and 50 it says for i have not spoken on my own authority but the father who sent me gave me a command what i should say and what i should speak and i know that his command is everlasting life therefore whatever i speak just as the father has told me so i speak guys i think one of the beautiful things of pleasing god and hosting his presence well is living a life of obedience uh, if you were at apc yesterday you would have heard that sermon of living a life of devotion is a living a consecrated life and hosting his presence right um and one of the most beautiful things about pleasing him and hosting his presence well is a living a life of obedience um now you time and time again in all the scriptures that we just read it jesus is constantly talking about i do what the father tells me to do i say what the father tells me to say uh i want you to look look at exodus chapter 40 it is the last chapter you don't you don't have to turn it now but you can just make a note of it it's the last chapter of the book of exodus um it it talks about it says okay the lord commanded and moses did lord commanded moses did lord commanded moses did so that's mentioned at least six or seven times moses did everything as the lord commanded Moses did everything as the Lord commanded. He put up everything inside the tabernacle just as the Lord commanded. He painted this color just as the Lord commanded. He erected this pole just as the Lord commanded. He did this just as the Lord commanded. After, and then it goes on to say after Moses did everything that the Lord had commanded him, then the glory of the Lord filled the temple and Moses was not able to enter in. Now this is the same Moses that we are talking about who was in the mountains for 40 days and 40 nights in the very presence of God where he got the blueprint for the tabernacle Moses was in the very presence of God when he got the tabernacle in the mountains for 40 days 40 nights and it is the same person who couldn't walk in when the glory filled the temple right and i mentioned this point i think in our praise and worship class is every time you obey every time you obey the next time you encounter him he shows up bigger in your life when i say he it's god first time moses encounters god it's a burning bush just a bush he hears the voice of god is saying okay go bring the people out moses says there was a lot of drama <laughs> but he eventually brings the people out the next time the whole mountain is on fire is like whoa whoa god the last time i saw you it was just a burning bush now the whole mountain is on fire and so okay he steps into the mountain deuteronomy it says the whole mountain was on fire and moses stepped in moses was like okay it's a good time to die so he walks in uh, you know uh, and then he gets the blueprint for the tabernacle and then he obeys and he does everything that the lord commanded and now his glory is so thicker that he can't step in are you guys with me 
God becomes bigger and bigger and bigger in our lives as we learn to host his presence well and that happens by pleasing his heart and that happens by obeying his commandments are you with me and that's exactly what jesus's life is all about if there's anything if there's there's so many things that you can learn from the life of jesus one of the things is living a life of humility and obedience uh, i would i want to re uh, recommend a book for you all to read it's a book called humility uh, of god by andrew murray okay uh, i'll just type it in for you guys Andrew M U R R A Y. It's called a humility um, of God. Um, it's a must read. I would recommend that for every Christian to read that book. It's beautiful. Okay, um, uh, we've covered so far, uh, but do you all have any questions or any thoughts? I want to conclude the chapter with 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 that passage we just we just read. So I want to end with that. Any questions or any thoughts? Because um okay, i i know we've spoken at length about uh some of these materials and as i always say that i just don't want to dump material on you and go away i really want to, to soak in and just meditate um on it as much as possible uh, any questions uh those online Sorry, I'm sitting down because I kind of sprained my ankle. Um, so you can pray for that. <laughs> pray for my healing. Um, yeah. Or I should just stop playing football and re realize that I'm getting old. <laughs> okay. Uh, should, no, no other questions. So any thoughts? It doesn't have to be a question or something that kind of that you learned. Uh, from this chapter, what we've covered, there must have been at least one point that stood out to you, or maybe touched your heart. Uh, about what we discussed, there anything that you'd like to share before we close? Yeah, can you use the mic if you don't mind? So. So when Jesus, he tells about, um, I do the works that I've seen, that my, I've seen my father do. I mean, but, um, but God is a planner. I mean, Jesus is the one who does the works. So what is Jesus like referring to when he says, I, I do the works that, my, that I see my father do? Yeah. In, in everything, so what are the works right so again so we remember we go back to the passage where jesus tells that hey, if you don't believe what i'm saying it's fine at least believe in the works that i do so in the works that he did was he healed people uh, you know he cleansed the lepers he raised the dead etc etc right and so in doing so he was revealing the will of the father uh, and so those are the works of the father it is in that assignment that he was sent and so and it was, it's not just that, and there is so much more to the things that what Jesus did, but that is the things that he's referring to. Now, having said, you know, let's just take an example. We'll learn about this in the next chapter, but it talks about the man in the pool of Bethesda, right? Uh, the cripple who was healed. Uh, now, he was a cripple for 38 years, right? In, in that pool of Bethesda, there were a lot of sick people. I'm sure there were a lot of crippled people as well. Yeah, but Jesus walked only to him and say, rise up, pick up a mat and walk. Like, why not the others? I get what I'm saying. And so, and we looked at at least three, four scriptures where Jesus we went to a solitude place and he prayed. Right? He would go off to a quiet place and he prayed. 
he must have received those assignments in those times of prayer with the father but the father must have spoken to him and maybe maybe that was one of the assignments as well because again time and time again jesus says i only do what the father tells me to do and i only say what the father tells me to say and so yeah Right, so Jatin says, as humans, we go through life struggles, but we know we are called as believers to pray for the sick, their healing, when we are discouraged ourselves at times. How do we deal with these opportunities where God wants us to use, but we don't uh, want to? Their healing, when we are discouraged ourselves at times, uh, how do we deal with these opportunities where God wants us to use us? but we don't want to. Uh, thanks for that question, uh, Justin. I think that's a very honest and a genuine question that we all deal with. We all go through with it. Um, it. It all comes down to our choice. That's one thing. But in the choice, I think what is, uh, and I'm sure we all recognize that it's also a command, isn't it? Uh, God has commanded us to uh, live a life that just like how uh, you know he, he lived, how Jesus lived his life. Uh, and we looked at that scripture where Jesus says, my strength or my food is in doing the will of the Father. And, and I would encourage you to, uh, you know, in, at mom in moments like that, when you are discouraged, uh, when you don't feel like, uh, you know, you're having a good day, um, is there something about doing the will of God that is, you know, praying for someone? If if the opportunity arises, it encourages you as well. And there has been so many times. Um, so I, I used to serve in this place called uh, the House of Prayer here in Bangalore, um, and I I had to lead worship um, every Thursday uh, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for two hours, and I did that for about three years. Every Thursday, this was at a House of Prayer. Now. In the three years, not every Thursday was the best Thursday of my life. Uh, you know, it was horrible. Like the days where I just want, didn't want to go, didn't feel like going and leading worship. Uh, but just pushing myself to go there and lead worship for those two hours every Thursday in those difficult days, um, I would come back renewed. I would come back re-energized, revitalized, you know, uh, so to say. Uh, just being in his presence, it does something. Uh, just doing something of his work, it does, it does something in us. And so as discouraging as things may look like, things may be, uh, take that step of faith, uh, you know, because you do what you have to do and let him do what he has to do. Because uh, all you got to do is pray for another person's healing and deliverance. Like uh, it can be a short prayer, long prayer, uh, you're right? Just saying, okay, I pray for you, Father. I pray for his fever or whatever. In the name of Jesus, be healed. Um, it's not going to take much, isn't it? You do what you have to do. You leave the rest to God. Um, I would, I would encourage you to do that. Yeah. Because we again, we looked at praise and worship in the last course that pr we've reduced praising and worshiping to our feelings. If I feel like, I will praise him. If I don't feel like, I will not praise him. I will not lift my hands because I don't feel like lifting my hands. I will not clap my hands because I don't feel like clapping my hands. I'm not feeling it. I'm not going through uh, a great day and whatnot. So I'm just going to fold my hands and sit. But we see that in the Bible that it's a command. right? We are commanded in the Word to do so, to worship him, uh, you know, because he is worthy of it all. So... I mean, just to add to that, uh, if I, I have to be completely honest, and uh, this is something, it's a season of my life. Uh, it's the darkest season um, of my life. Uh, just to, you know, I'm not extremely proud about it, but I thought I have to be more uh, vulnerable. Um, just because I'm a teacher or your teacher, whatever, I don't have life figured it all out. I haven't lived the best life. Um, so I mentioned that I used to leave worship, right, at the house of prayer. Uh, I think it so 2013. 2013 on record has to be my second worst year of my life. <laughs> uh, 2013, because in that year, uh, everything that can possibly go wrong was going wrong in my life. Like from uh, work, from my personal relationship with my friends, 
uh, and especially at home. Uh, so my in in that year, my my mother and father almost separated. They almost got separated, and so it was a very dark, very very dark moment in our family in my life. Uh, and so the last thing I wanted to do was go lead worship. It was so dark, uh, and I, I think I would have read the Bible that year only three times. Three times in that entire year. 2013, this is 10 years ago, and uh, and I have to go lead worship. What a hypocrite, right? Uh, and so I would go to lead worship. I would. Actually, I would not lead. I gave up leading. I just wanted to go worship, right? I would just go, uh, push myself um, to just worship because I knew all of everything that was happening around me. Uh, it's not based on my thing. I wanted to do it because he's worthy, uh, and that's all I had. I did not feel like worshiping. I did not feel led to lead worship. I, like I said, I shared, I read the Bible only thrice uh, in that whole year. Uh, but in all of those sessions that I would lead worship, uh, those two hours, I would get my one on one with Him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, we've sung this song Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. You know that song? I live for you alone. I mean, how many times have you sung that song? God must have been like, what? How many hearts do you have? You know what I'm saying? Okay. How many times you'll give your heart and you'll go do and do the same thing what you used to do before? But the point is, uh, God is so beautiful that the moment when you say, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, if you sang that yesterday, and if you sing it again today, Lord, I give you my heart, He believes you. In that moment, He takes you for your word. He doesn't care what everything that you've done. He takes you for your word. Uh, and that's something so beautiful about our God is, is that is as no matter how discouraging and how a mess a life can look like, and I mean, trust me, there will be days where your life will be so dark that you can't see. Uh, you know, <laughs> there has been moments in in time where I've led worship, and you can f I felt the wings of angels brush my face and all of that. And then there will be times where you lead worship, you don't feel anything, not even a single feather of an angel types. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Uh, or in ministry, uh, guys, uh, as Christian leaders or pastors, wherever God places you, it's going to be hard. It's going to be very hard. Persecution will be the least of the tr troubles. <laughs> Right, uh, but take that step of faith because everything and anything we do for Him is not based on us. It does not depend on how you feel or whatever it is. Just take that step of faith because uh, that can lead you to an encouragement, just an extra charge or more one liter of fuel, like just to go another. You know, um, Isaiah forty it says, right? Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength on wings like eagles. Right. So wait on him, hope in him. Uh, one day at a time, he gives strength, right? Uh, Psalm 119, 100, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a, a lamp unto my feet, isn't it? It's not a floodlight where you can see one kilometer or two kilometers from here. His word is a lamp, which is just enough for another moment, for another day. Uh, his word is enough for us to sustain for another uh, another day, right? You know, day by day, he gives us strength to to do what he has called us to do. And the one who has called us to do is faithful enough to finish, isn't it? So, yeah, that's just a slight word of encouragement. Okay, uh, if there are no other questions or thoughts, I think we can close, right? Uh, Amen. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll stop the recording and we'll close. All right. Thank you all for joining. I'll see you all next Monday. Bye bye.